In this video, I'm going to walk you through a heat load calculation on my 1984 1,000 square foot per ton house. Okay, the goal for this video is to debunk the 500 square foot per ton myth when sizing equipment. What I've done is a heat load calculation using WrightSoft on my own house. Just a block load, pretty simple. And I'm going to show you kind of um, all the properties that I use just to prove that I'm not fudging anything. And we'll see what the outcome is. So I've done uh, just a block load, first floor. The second floor, I'm in a roughly 2,000 square foot colonial. And if we look at the ceiling properties, asphalt shingles, gypsum board, no roof insulation, vented attic, R19 insulation, pretty standard stuff. Uh, let's go to the windows. Okay, we have an operable window, they're vinyl, uh, eighth inch thick, clear, there's air in them, again, standard. And, and as you can see, I do have windows drawn in. And the, uh, the wall. So we have frame wall, wood exterior, no board insulation, two by four framing, half inch sheathing, R13 in the walls, 16 inches on center, gypsum board, and that's kind of what it looks like. Here's the floor. So we have an exterior floor. I am on a crawl space, so it's wood framed. There is R19 cavity insulation. The crawl space is sealed tight. It is partially encapsulated. I have hardwood floors. The exterior, no exterior insulation, and no wall insulation. So that's kind of what it looks like. And on the second floor, it's a little bit smaller than the first floor. As you can see, I have windows drawn in. All right, let's go to the zone information. All right, indoor conditions. That is 70 degrees heating, 75 cooling, 50% RH, relative humidity. All right, what we have here, this is our heating load. This is our sensible cooling load. And this is our latent cooling load. Cooling load. Now I adjusted the uh, the rating swing multiplier to one, and I also adjusted the sensible heat ratio from 0 0.70, which is standard, to 0.81. Because what I actually did was I went and I looked at the expanded performance data on a piece of equipment that I would I'm thinking about using next, and I was able to verify that I, at these indoor conditions, that I can reach my latent heat and my sensible heat requirements. So I entered that, and it tells me it needs a two-ton. All right, this is just kind of everything on one sheet. So you can see the outdoor design conditions, 18 degrees, in, inside 70, and this is again in the winter. Uh, temperature difference of 52, and that is the heat loss. I did use a blower door for the infiltration. I'll, I'll jump back there to show you again. I think that's a mistake a lot of designers use is the standard infiltration rates that WrightSoft uses. And I'll show you that in a minute. So the, here's the, the square footage, 1915. And cooling, 92 degrees, 75 inside. And you can see that the, the latent is 3180 and the sensible is, it is uh, pardon me, right here, 19840. So total of 2320. Again, check the expanded performance data on equipment and a two-ton unit will handle both the latent and the sensible at 92 degrees and 75 degrees inside.
All right, what we're going to do here is, again, I use the blower door to uh, do the infiltration. And we can see that the with my blower door number, which is pretty favorable, it is, uh, I think it was about 7.75 ACH50, roughly a one-to-one -one ratio of square foot to CFM, so which is good, especially for 1984 built house it's very good so we're at 33 percent in heating and 10 percent in cooling and those are the BTUs right there so if we were to change the infiltration method to simplified which is standard semi loose which a lot I see all the time on loads average okay average construction quality look average is considerably better than where I had it Oop, pardon me semi loose is pretty much where I was so I test houses you know, several I do blower door testing five times a week minimum and most houses are considerably leakier than my house I want to say probably 90% of them unless they're new so we, we would I mean most houses would be in this loose category but again we're, we're not doing that we're just using the simplified and I think that's a you can see how much the load can change when you adjust the infiltration it's it's pretty big so I think uh, a lot of people are missing the boat on accurate heat load calculation if they're not doing using the blower door method. Pardon me, I'm at a 7.9 ACH50, so it's pretty good. 19, 19 something square square foot, 2132 CFM, pretty good. I got the Ecobee thermostat earlier in the winter, and I don't have any summertime data, but this is on December 31st, New Year's Eve. Now, we weren't partying, so there wasn't uh, a lot of interior uh, heat gains, and you can see right here, this is the runtime. This is the fan, and this is the heat pump. So at, let's see if we can get this over a little bit. At 18 degrees outside, with a set point of 70 degrees, my unit turned off. And when it turns off, that's a pretty good indicator of when the load is matched to the output So of the piece of equipment. You can see right here, I did a, I, I checked the capacity with the Testo 605i. And I was only, you know, at 18 degrees outside, I'm only putting out about 13,000 BTUs. The bright soft calculated my heat loss at about 32,000 BTUs. And the actual reality is at 18 degrees, I'm at, at 13 will satisfy it under these conditions. Now, if it was an extended period of time, with uh, low temperatures and it was at three o'clock in the morning it might be a little bit different but at these conditions uh, that's what happened okay now fast forward a, a little bit we're at we're on January 7th at 6 25 a.m. so this is before people are really getting up this is you know no Sun no solar gains no internal gains and you can see that my system turns off at one degree outside after electric heat ran with the heat pump. So this is again, this is electric heat, this is the heat pump. At one degree, it turned off. If we can go here, we can find that with the electric heat operating and the heat pump, at one degree, we are essentially 27,000 BTUs. So that kind of proves a little bit how uh, 
liberal the heat load calculation can be. I'm looking forward to the summertime and being able to track some of my data because what I currently have is a two and a half ton heat pump. And uh, I have a funny feeling that it will be turning off on the hottest days of the year. So I hope you guys found that helpful that I showed that a 1984 house can be a thousand square foot per ton. I've proven to myself, hopefully to you, that the heating load is very liberal, that my unit is considerably, my house is considerably lower than 32,000 BTUs. And I have a feeling that we're going to find out that that two ton number is pretty much spot on. So I'm going to continue to track my uh, equipment run times and I will report back in the summertime with uh, proof of uh, this or proof of failure. So thanks for tuning in. Please like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.